Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a different type of video. I've never done one like this before where I show you this particular technique and it is using a stick foundation to do your foundation and to contour with. Like we see all of those little, you know, tutorials either on Instagram or little, you know, things like that where people have, you know, they draw those stripes on their face and they blend everything in and um, a lot of times it seems like a lot. It seems really heavy. It seems very intense and very intimidating. You guys know I'm not all about that. Like I really like things to look natural. I really like things to be um, realistic. My hair's still up from where I pinned it um, to do my makeup. But, you know, I like things to look natural. I like things to look good and not to look makeup-y. You know, I've never done a video like that before because I just haven't really found the right product to do that with that isn't super fussy. And I've gotta say, I'm digging these Makeup Forever Ultra HD sticks. They are really nice. They like melt into your skin. They're not heavy or ultra like makeup-y. Like a lot of stick foundations are that I've tried in the past. Usually they set up pretty chalky or they're just very thick. And these just melt into your skin. It's really, really cool. And so, you know, I have a light shade. I have a dark shade. I'm going to talk all about that and um, show you that in the, in the actual tutorial part of the video. But I really wanted to kind of review these anyways. I've really been loving the Liquid Ultra HD. And so when I saw these, I thought, I've got to try that. And um, so I thought that I would try this whole method. And I didn't expect to like it at all. I thought, oh, well, you know, I'll share this method. And it'll be something that maybe some people are into. But honestly, I'm really into it. So cool to find something that's just totally different from what you normally do. This is just totally different from how I normally do my makeup. And it's cool. It's like kind of refreshing to find a new way that works. And um, it feels good. Like, like when I move my face, I don't feel like I'm wearing makeup when I touch my face. I don't feel like anything's on there. It's just the coolest stuff. Actually, I feel like I have a lot less on my face than what I normally do. I feel like it looks more natural than my normal um ways of doing my foundation which is really cool really really love the effect that it gives so if you are into this or you want to be into this or you've seen those and you're like I don't know if I can do it hopefully it'll be helpful for you guys I feel like I use so much less product that's all that I use I didn't use any extra bronzer I didn't use any extra um, blush I didn't use any so that's just truly what it is it looks like a natural like dimension it doesn't look heavily painted on I will just quickly say a lot of times either these stick foundations look very heavy and cakey they're, they're kind of draggy or they're very greasy and these are just perfect they are just perfect they're I don't want to say they're in the middle because I wouldn't say they're dry or they're greasy. I would just say they're just good. They're just what they should be. And um, anyways, I hope that y'all enjoy this. Yeah, the way that I do it, I think is just no fuss. It's simple. You get a good effect. That's a good everyday nice effect. That's not going to look too much, you know, but you could definitely go heavier if you wanted to. But um, just the way that I do it, I think is just a little more realistic, a little easier. So, um... So we'll start the tutorial in a second. I'll kind of give you a quick outfit of the day. These are just little stud earrings that I wear all the time that I think I got from Target years back. Um, I've got my L&M combo that I'm obsessed with. I love this necklace combo. It is so rainy and so gloomy here today. So um, I'm probably just going to wear like hunter boots. And I've got this big oversized t-shirt on. So I thought this would kind of like make it a little more fun. And then with that, I love pairing these HRH uh, bracelets that are just so beautiful. I really love these. And it's kind of a lot together with the stones, but I thought, who, who even cares? It's so gross out today, and I just thought it'd be fun. Um, and then this is a little combo ring set from Bubble Bar. And there's one more that goes with it, but I just think this looks nice. Um, and then this is a men's t-shirt from... Banana Republic. I just really loved this, you know, this design on it. And, um, yeah, just really simple and easy. And I'm wearing just some, these distressed jeans that are just the lightly distressed ones from Seven for All Mankind. I don't have on shoes yet, but I will just put on my hunter boots when we go out. Uh, so yeah, no big deal. So I hope that you guys enjoy the video. Let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Okay, so I'm starting with a primer, which I usually would skip, but I think it's important for this, and I'm using the Makeup Forever. This is the uh, mattifying primer. I'm usually not a huge fan of these, of primers in general. I just think, I figured out 
totally figured out why. I just hate the way it feels when I touch it and I rub it on my skin. It just feels like bleh, like glue or it feels like greasy. I'm just not a huge fan. So I figured out what I can do is use it with a brush and it's actually much better for me. I went ahead and did my eyes so that when I got done with this, it would just be like, ah, oh, it would just be all finished. I normally always do my eyes last. So. That one feels good. I'm a fan of these Makeup Forever, the Step 1 primers. I like the um, pink Radiance one, too. But I've used the mattifying one one time before this. Really liked it. It feels, like, smooth but clean. I don't know how to describe it, but it's not greasy. Okay, so I'm using two of these, and the, for the light one, I'm using the 117 and the 128. So it's just kind of hard to get just right, I think, when you're getting the darker shade. But the 117 is like the foundation shade I would use. What I do to start off with is I am going to use this like I would a foundation. So um, put it in the areas where you want, you know, how you want the coverage to be. Don't go overboard because with these sticks you can really do that. And I'm actually going to use the same brush that I used for my primer. So I'm just going to blend that in. And uh, you can certainly use your fingertips or anything like that. But I'm just making sure that everything's really blended in. I don't like to do the whole like draw the lines and the light and the dark and then mix it all in. I just, I'm not a huge fan of that. I think this way just works better for me. It's pretty to do that on camera and everything, but um, to me it just makes a lot more sense to do it this way. So coverage on this is pretty impressive and it feels really clean, which is kind of different for a stick foundation. And then anywhere where I need like any more coverage, it's just kind of nice to do. So I think like when you're doing something like this, the biggest intimidation factor is, okay, I've got to find my right shade of foundation and I've got to find a lighter shade and I've got to find a darker shade that's going to be just right rather than just getting like a bronzer or something that's just like... The shade isn't that hard to guess or get right for your skin tone. Um, this is really nice and the coverage is awesome. I'm just kind of going around just lightly. Um, but if you do it like this and you just say, okay, I'm going to do one shade for my, um, it's not drying either, so I'm doing it under my eyes too. One shade for my skin and just get my skin really perfected and then go back and do one shade for my um, contouring. It makes it a lot easier. You don't have to find like so many crazy colors and and if I'm gonna do this, like use a foundation, I wanna use this as my foundation. Like I don't wanna have to layer this over, you know what I mean? You could even do this like directly on the thing, which worked a little better. So so I've got it pretty perfected. It looks very flat, and that's what for me contouring, I'm not really trying to like chisel my face or do anything like that. Which that is what you can use it for, obviously, but really what I use contouring for is to give me dimension, not necessarily to like slim my face, because I don't think I really need to do that, but I, I think that's definitely, you know, that's definitely what it does and it's what it's for, but I like to just, it just keeps my makeup from looking so flat. So I'm just blending the heck out of it. <laughs> Next, you want to get a different brush. You could, I mean, you could certainly use this one. I just would want to have this one clean because I wouldn't go back and use it with a lighter color after using it with this. So you might think, oh, I need to go way darker. You really don't. I just, I kind of chose like a mid-range color. And this is the 128Y415. And I've got a brush like this, which I think this is the best one for blending cream contour. It's their little round kabuki, the F82. So you can, if you want a softer look, put the brush right on there and then blend. Uh, but for the sake of showing you what I'm doing, you start right here and um, kind of dab it and there. Now you don't want to like draw it too far in because as you blend, it's going to go a little farther in. 
Okay, so not, not a big deal. So we'll do the cheekbones first. Take the dry brush and I start right here and kind of work it upward um, so that I don't drag too much of the color downward and then start blending. And kind of take that part and then I take that down the jawline. Take it up my temple. And then the good thing is you can take this brush that you used before and you can kind of go around and that will kind of clean it up. And see, it's just very natural. I think that it's not like so harsh like you typically think of when you see people like doing this, you know? It's not like super intense. I mean, you can take a little, you know, right down your nose. For that, I would just use my finger. You don't have to go like super crazy with that. But... I'll show you how we'll kind of go back and clean up in a minute. This, I think, is just the easiest way to do it. Okay, now around your hairline, you could think, and then again, take this brush that you used before and then clean it up around the edges for the blending. Okay, and then um, around the hairline, you know, you may have seen people that actually put the product totally fine but I really like to be careful around there especially since I'm so pale so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the brush and just get it on there and you see that's plenty I mean you, you really don't need to go nuts here um, and I mean again if you have a darker skin tone it's the same thing as well because you're just gonna be using darker colors so using these same techniques is is gonna I mean I say oh it's because I'm fair well Really, no matter what skin tone you have, you're going to be, like, using a correspondingly, like, darker color, you know? So, if you don't want it to be so intense for you, use the same tips. And see, I think that looks really good and really natural. It doesn't look scary. I don't look like after where sometimes you're just, like, you just look like a totally different person. Ah. Uh, okay. Not sure if that, those faces translated to what I was trying to say. But, um, Okay. And I feel like these are really good, like they look like skin, you know, it doesn't look like I've got so many products on my skin, it doesn't look heavy I guess is what I'm trying to say. So what you can do is after you do that, like I said, you know, I don't have a much lighter color, you could def definitely do that um, if you do have a bit darker skin tone, but I, there's not one in the range that is that much lighter for me. So you can go back with that original um, lighter color and you can kind of clean up around which is what I like to do. And see, now that you've got that dark color down, this appears a little lighter than it did, and you can kind of clean that up. I don't really feel like I need to do that, though. Um, you know, if your nose contour got a little out of control, put a little bit right down the center of your nose. And it's just super simple. I would really recommend this formula um, I have worn this before. It works really well throughout the day, or it lasts really well throughout the day. Um, see, I don't feel like I need to add like a bronzer to warm my skin up. I feel like it's kind of already done, and I feel like it looks good. I do need some lipstick. I'm going to just use this perfect nude Too Faced Perfect Lips pencil. use that all over and I'm going to use a little bit of the Marc Jacobs Moon Glow gloss it just like that really pretty okay okay so I haven't done blush or anything but I just wanted you to see you know I didn't do anything super light under my eyes I can definitely do that at this point um, but I just wanted you to see what it looked like like truly after this is the Radiant Rose by MAC and I'm just using a little little bit I just feel kind of like, I just feel like uh, that's a good little method. And, you know, so many times I see those tutorials or those, <laughs> Olivia's squeezing, those little things where people are like, you know, even on Instagram where people are doing all that contouring and it's fun to watch, but I always think like, wow, I wonder what that looks like, like in the daylight, you know, like is it too much? And, um, this really isn't. It, this particular foundation, first of all, I think is good because it melts into your skin. It looks natural. Um, 
and it doesn't set up like sticky or anything, which is important. But you know, I feel like kind of using that as my foundation. I didn't layer another product over like Estee Lauder. I, I brought this out to show you. These are like um, cream contours and highlight. But if you actually use the foundation that you're gonna use, this you would have to layer over another foundation and it would just look like a lot. But if you actually use the foundation that you're gonna use, as this and you do it in a way that kind of works um, then you're not gonna feel like you're wearing something like this feels so light and I don't even feel like I really have to set it but I might um, I'll, I'll show you what I would do to set it I would use this it's a translucent crystal setting powder by NARS um, because I don't want to alter the color or anything and I would just kind of keep it around my areas where I get oily so I don't like kill the effect but that stuff's so light anyways. But I just feel like that's a really good product. I feel like that's just a good, easy way to do it that's not super overboard. Um, we are gonna go out today and I'm gonna feel super comfortable going out. And that's one thing about me, I do, I, I'm very conscious about that. Like I don't want my makeup to look done. You know, like I don't wanna see the makeup. So I really do like this. The coverage is really good. I could have even gone in and maybe used a little more like around areas kind of like concealer-ish but I think that's a good thing to do it's you know get a couple shades darker if you're gonna order this from Sephora maybe you know order the shade that you know is yours or maybe even a couple if you're not sure um, and then order a couple of shades that are darker and maybe you can kinda see by me telling you my shades like how far in I kinda went um, but it's just going to be totally different from what, for whatever you want to do. But this to me is just the perfect, the 128 Y415 is the perfect contour shade for me. Um, but like I said, get a couple and Sephora does free returns so you can return what you, you know, I do that a lot. Like if it's something that I know I'm not going to go to the store, I'll get different shades and then I'll return. You know, I'll try them out. And that's what they do. You know, that, that's what they expect you to do if you're going to order. Or if you can go into a store and try them out, definitely do that. So... I hope that y'all enjoyed the video. Um, let me tell you what I'm using. I guess it's just going to be long, whatever. Um, okay, so for the rest of my face, uh, for my eyes, I used this color that I'm really, really loving. It's the Telesto by NARS. Okay, it is super, super good. And um, I kind of just used a fluffier brush and put it like in my crease, smudged it under my eyes, and it was just perfect. And I've really been into these gel cream liners lately. The Bobbi Brown ones are really great, and this is the Dark Chocolate Ink, and I used that. And then I used the Demi Wispies, um, mm -hmm. and super simple. And then I used the, uh, where is it, my, it's the new, oh my god, where did I put it? Did I actually put it up? Yeah, I put it back where it went, go figure. The Sigma Black Sinuosity Lash. I have tried all three of theirs, and I've had them for a very long time now. The Sinuosity is my favorite. I really, really like it. It's the one that's curling. It's got like a rubbery, curved bristle, which is kind of hard to find in a... The, the formula is really good, so that's that's a product that I'm really liking lately. Um, for my brows, I use my Anastasia Brow Wiz. For my lips, you saw what I did there. Oh, it just looks really natural. I don't even think I'm gonna add blush. So yeah, I hope that y'all enjoyed the video. Um, definitely don't be afraid of that. It's not like a really scary method. You can definitely do it and it's easy. And you can see, honestly, I use less products than I normally would where I'd use like foundation and a layer of bronzer and this and that and all that. That is really nice and I think I'm gonna be doing that a lot lately. So I'll stop talking about it. Hope that y'all enjoyed the video and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.